Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. I hope my voice coming good and clear. I apologize. Uh, I'm late uh, trying to, uh, you know, comprehend uh, how to fix the microphone. You know, it keeps saying to me, your microphone is not working. Uh, let me know, please, if you have any uh, problem. Uh, do you hear me? Am I heard? Let me know, please, if you if you hear me fine. Uh, I'm just using this stream yard today, not the regular. All right. Uh, as you see in the screen, we have a comment uh, of this Mohammedan. Uh, let us see how we can do this. Uh, maybe here. All right. So this uh, Mohammedan, he made a comment. Uh, his name is Sultan Ahmed. And he said, I hope you can read what he is saying here. CP perhaps does not know how European used to live before colonization, i.e. before looting, robbing five continent by going against the sweet teaching of Jesus Christ. Whatever they are enjoying completely of looted worth. CP is wise person. He never speak about these looting, robbing, he conceals such an immoral thing, but to throw the morals thing of others as immoral. You know, here I find it very funny. I remember actually uh, just a few months ago, there was somebody from England, I'm not sure who, I don't know, the King of England, somebody said something. And then, and, and that comment was about what the benefit of those who've been occupied by England, you know, like how England helped them. And I saw a video made have four people, I guess uh, two Indian, I'm not sure if there's any Pakistani, and uh, one white man and one white woman. And they start bashing England for the evil England did. And I, you know, I made, I left a comment. I wish I can find the, the video. And I said, it's very funny that England is bad, but all of them, they live in England. England is did not do anything good to India, but evil, but yet they speak English, not their language. And England is bad, but we wear their clothing. So look how bad those people are. I mean, they are the bad to the point we uh, we took the way they live to live like it. It's reality. They are bad. They are evil. They are disgusting. Every single Muslim in the world he dreamed to immigrate. They crossed the sea, risking their life to arrive to England. But remember, they are looting. They are filthy. But your Muslim country will not take you. Same for those who they are not even Muslims, like, you know, from India, whatever. You are a Christian, you are a Hindu, I don't care. But, you know, I've, I see a lot of hypocrisy. You know, as an example, France occupy many countries in the Middle East. And until now, the hospital built by the, by the French, until now, they are used, and they are the most useful hospitals. The first one who give, you know, bring printers, to the Middle East, it was the occupation. And that made a revolutionary of education. We don't have a printing. Only rich people, they can have books. Who is the one who gave us the access to books? It was those looters, the one you call them looters. Who is the one who first established a railway train? The looters, the Western, the looters. huh? Who is the one who first installed electricity for you? The looters. So they are hypocrite. They are liars. Uh, I'm not defending them, by the way, the Western. I'm not a Western. I'm not a blue eyes man. Uh, but I have to say the truth. You know, maybe they have a motive to come and take your wealth or some of it, or maybe all of it. But they give you a great benefit, which will change your life. You know, many countries will stay behind centuries and centuries if not those Western. In other hand, 
Let us check out what the Ottoman did when they occupied the Middle East. France occupied the Middle East for 20 years, or maybe even less. The Ottoman, they occupied the Middle East for hundreds of years. The Albanian, they controlled Egypt for more than a thousand and a hundred years. What happened to Egypt? All of us, we knew that Egypt before Islam was a wonderful country. What happened? Since Islam came to Egypt until now, where is the Egypt? One of the most great, the greatest countries in the world. What happened? What happened to Alexandria? You burned their library and you used it to cook food. Now, let us talk about looting. As you said in your comment, those Western, they cannot say, in the name of Jesus, we are going to loot you and rob you. You are right. But the Muslims, when they attack other country, they attack only to loot. Isn't it your prophet, he says, attack the Romans so we can get the blonde girls? Is that true? I'm making things up. <laughs> See the hypocrisy of those people? Let us examine a little hadith here and there to show the looting culture in the looting religion, in the looting prophet. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. Is my voice good, guys? I'm using even, I'm, I'm using just $19 microphone. I hope it's good. <clears throat> this is the cheapest microphone you can buy. <laughs> but it's good, like you can take it around with you, whatever you want. You can put it in your pocket. <laughs> So in this hadith here we see they are talking about Ghazwa. Ghazwa, what Ghazwa? Looting. <laughs> hey Sultan, are you there? <clears throat> Can you tell me what Ghazwa? You're a prophet, he have many Ghazwas. At least 20. What Ghazwa is? Ghazwa is attacking your neighbors to steal their money and their wealth and women. That's what your prophet do for living. Did your prophet ever did any farming with the Muslims in the beginning of Islam? Did your Muslim Muhammad and his companion, they uh, grow sheep, they are shepherd, maybe they do fishing, what they do for a living? If we read together, uh, is, is the screen clear? Uh, guys, is the screen clear for you? You can read the text? Or it's not clear enough? You can read it? Okay. Look look what it says. We were in the company of Allah Messenger in Ghazwa. He remarked about men who claim to be Muslims, saying, this man is from uh, the people of Hellfire. Okay. Muhammad, he said, when he is a thief, attacking his neighbors to steal their money, this man is a bad man. Okay, why he's a bad man? And here you ask yourself, Muhammad, he accept men who they are bad men in his army. He just said, this man who is a Muslim, he is from the companion of hellfire, from the people of hellfire. So why he's in the army of Muhammad? In the end of the translation, they are giving you a false translation, but we will correct it. Here it says, when the battle started, the man fought violently till he got wounded. Somebody says, oh Allah Messenger, the man he described as being from the people of hellfire, he, you know, fought violently today and died, which means supposedly according to Islam is a murder. This Muhammad, he promised people, if you go, I go with me, and attack and, and die, you are going to be in heaven right away. Actually, the second you shed the first blood, drop of blood, you are in heaven, and women, they are naked, their legs open for you. Excuse my language. So Muhammad got busted. Muhammad, he claimed that this guy is not a good Muslim. 
But this Muslim, he died fighting for Muhammad. Or let us say, for the robbery. The Prophet said, he will go to hellfire. Muhammad, he knew what is in the heart of people. He's God. He can tell who will go to hell, who will go to heaven. He's not a man like us. He knew the unseen. He can read your heart. Breaking all the commands of Allah. Isn't it Allah who said, don't think that those who die for the sake of Allah, they are dead, but they are living with their Allah? Muhammad, go against the Quran. He threw Allah under the bus. Some people were uh, on a on, on point of doubting uh, the truth of what Prophet Muhammad said. You see here the Muslims, they could not believe that this man Muhammad, because he's stubborn, he claimed that this guy will go to hell, and now they have an evidence that he was fighting from his heart and he died supposedly as a murderer. Still he insists he will go to hell. So even the Muslims, what the heck is that? He might do the same for us. How we can trust this man? While they were in this state, suddenly someone said, he was still alive but severely wounded when nightfall he lost patient and committed suicide. Ah, he committed suicide. Ah, now the fabrication of the story. So now they will tell you why he will go to hell. Hmm? But in the top it says, he, he, I mean, how he died. Muhammad did not say to them, no, he did not die. Other guy, when I, when I, when I cover up what Muhammad did, duct tape, he said, no, 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 he did not die normally. He commits suicide, brother. And then the prophet, he was informed of that. He said, Allah is a greater, Allahu Akbar. I testify that I am Allah's slave and his apostle. So now he is confirming that he knew. Then he ordered Bilal to announce among the people, none will enter paradise but Muslim. Of course. So what was guy, this guy? The guy who said Shahada and he went with you in the war. He's not a Muslim. And then here it says, and Allah may support his religion, i.e. Islam, even with evil men. Look at the first translation. In the translation, they say disobedient man. In Arabic, it says, Bil rajulil fajr. Fajr, the, a person who is a whore. He is so low to the point we can call the person a whore. A woman, she is a whore, we call her fajra. A man who is a whore, we call him fajr. So Muhammad saying, Allah, he was supporting Islam by such a bad man, evil man. So even Islam, sponsored by evil people, and your prophet, you know, witness for that I'm going to take this see if we can find other translation for the same hadith just to show you how Muslim they lie in translation because if Islam from God how in the world Islam was going to be supported by a whore this is Sahih Muslim uh, You see here, look how they, the same word, how the Muslim, they change, they change the meaning of it. It's exactly the same word, you know. Fajr, you see it highlighted in Arabic. And in the other side, the translation. Uh, let us see here. Here, translate the word as perjured, perjured, something like that, perjured. So this is Muhammad is speaking about what we you know. Who is the ones? Uh, let us see. Inna Allah yu'ayyidu al-dina bil-rajul al-fajr. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. This is the same one. Ah, look at the translation here. How it translated? How the translation becomes suddenly different? Read with me. Evil, wicked man. Evil, wicked man. Islam supported. By evil wicked man. 
This is what Fajr means. <laughs> Allah, he support Islam by evil, wicked man. Do you see it? <laughs> so, if you are trying to say to me that the Western, they were wicked when they invade those countries, at least they are not saying that our God told us to be wicked. You have a religion who invade half of the earth, killed hundreds of millions, 80 millions alone in India, raping women, kidnapping, enslaving. And we have now a proof from your book saying that Islam is supported by wicked men. And then if a Muslim says to us that Islam is a religion of the good men, we have reference to prove that this is absolutely false. This is the link. Who want to save it for us? If there's anyone? Are we saving the reference? A Mohammedan saying, CP is taking it out of context. Absolutely. I mean, guys, it's out of context. How the guy is fighting with your prophet and he is an evil man. And then Muhammad, he say clearly, Islam supported, the religion of Allah supported by wicked men. And yet he is saying, I'm taking it out of context. Can you believe it? And we look for the same hadith. I'm using, guys, I'm using Bible verses. This is from the Bible. <laughs> yeah, he is using the Bible. Hadith Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number four. 203 it turned to be this is the Bible well it is obviously what you can say and now let us see how Muslims make living how they make living they must be having a way to make living don't they oh yeah I'm sure let us see here it says This hadith is speaking about people of Dhumma, which means the Christian and the Jews, who are now controlled by Muslims. And I advise you, look, look at the translation, guys. I advise you, like when you read it, let me let me try to zoom in. Why I cannot zoom in more? How come I was able to zoom in with that one? But with this one, I cannot. Huh. Well, I was able to zoom in in the other page. Ah, oh, here we go. So, guys, I'm going to advise you to be kind to the Ansar people, okay? They are the people of Islam. And then I advise you to be kind to the Bedouin. Uh -huh. And I advise you to be kind to the non-Muslim people under the Dhimma. What does that mean? Just hold. Advice to be kind? That's nice. That's wonderful. But look what it says after it. <laughs> they are the one who give you the source of income. You may leave them now. <laughs> Be nice to your cow, okay? Don't kill the cow. Leave them for now because we need the income. So who is the looter? Who is the looter? What is the source of income to Muslims? It's in the front of your eyes. Are we making it up? Is this is a weak hadith? Maybe this is a weak hadith, brother. No, it's sahih. It's very sahih. It's in Al-Bukhari. It is Sahih Muslim, it's a Musnad Ahmad, it's all over. What is the source of Muslim income? It's 
You want link? Okay, no problem. Here we go. But how many of you want to save it? Because later you might ask me where we have the reference. And I will say to you, well, you know what? I'm not going to give it to you. You've been lazy. Always remember, if you find, like I say something in the screen, let us say this video downloaded, posted in a different channel. How you can find it? I'm showing the reference. Search for this, Musnad Ahmad. 362, 363. Very simple. Other way, let us say you were not able to see the number for some reason. Uh, you know, copy some of the text from the screen. You can like type it. And actually now these days, I mean, you can just use your phone, use Google search, right? You can take now a screenshot uh, uh, with your phone and the phone will search for you the text. Actually, in the other day, when a Muslim, I asked him to read, he claimed that he speak Arabic. What he was doing, uh, he take with his phone a picture Google will search for it, and then he will know what verse, and then he will start reading Arabic. Very simple. And actually, not only that, Google can translate for you from the screen if you are using your phone immediately. So now look at this. Be kind, advise you to be kind to the Muslim people under your rules, Ahlul Dhimma. Huh? The one who honored the covenant with the prophet. I what? Because they are the source of your income. Leave them now. Who is the robber? Who is the liar? I just remember another hadith. Let me find it. This hadith about farming. Is farming allowed in Islam? We will find out. Muhammad entered a house and he found farming tools. And he said, any house, those tools enter it, uh, immunity will enter with it. It will be humiliated, you know? Why? Because he don't want people to be farmers. He want people to be, you know, rapist uh, criminals. So here we will see, uh, let us find the hadith. I'm just trying to search and find it. If any of the admins, they, they have the link, they can post it. But I will try to find it. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Let us show it to you. And then you will see how stupid the culture of Arab, you know, the, the, the thieves, all Islam is based on nothing. They, do, they don't have a job. For centuries, it is us in the Middle East, the, the Arab Christians, who they are feeding the Muslims. No job, no business, nothing. They just have sex, make babies, and they attack the enemy to steal more money. And then that will in increase their income. Let us see. 
Uh, all right. Read with me this hadith. This is authentic. This is Al Bukhari. This is, exists all over the place, you know. So let us go to Al Bukhari, which is the most authentic according to Muhammadan. Narrated Abu um, uh, Umama uh, Al Bahili, he said, I saw some ag agriculture equipment and said, I heard the Prophet saying, There is no house in which this equipment enters except that Allah. will cause humiliation to enter it. So how the Muslims eat? Any Muslim can tell me? What do you do for a living? At that time you used to make cars? Oil? Gas maybe? Who feed you? Who do the farming? So your income is from the Christians. Your farming is done by the Christians. And you do what? You are just a rapist, terrorist, coward, stealing the income and the money and the land of the people who they are, the original people there. What the Muslims have to do with Syria as an example? Nothing. Iraq, nothing. Jordan, nothing. Israel, nothing. Morocco, Libya, Algeria, nothing. They hijacked the land and now Algerian, they call themselves Arab. You see how, how danger, dangerous Islam is? They come to you with religion to dominate you. And now because you want to try to save your ass from being a second-hand citizen, You call yourself an Arab. Egyptian Muslim, like Mimi Hijab, he called himself Arab. What do you have to do with the Arab? Are you an African or an Arab? That curly hair is coming from the Arab? So when this Muhammadan, he made this comment, I said to myself, it's time to give him a spank. And now, guys, did, you, did we save the links? Did we save the reference? Are we saving reference? Those can be very helpful to shut up anyone you want. When they say to you, because now we can prove how and what Muslims live. Like the Caliphate Harun al-Rashid. More than 11,000 billy dancer in one palace. I mean, how they can fit even there. Just women to dance. And they say to you, in the time of the caliphate, you know, Spain, we, look what we did in Spain. All the building done in Spain is not done by Muslims. The Muslims do not know how to build. They do not know how to make juries. They do not know how to build. They are not even allowed to do that because they want only people carrying sword and go to war. As you see, They can't even do farming. So where the food is coming from? When Muhammad, he killed the Jews, he even cut their trees. And then you will see a Muslim saying to you, brothers and sisters, Prophet Muhammad, he speak about, you know, keeping uh, the one who planted the tree. He planted a tree for him in heaven, but he is the one who cut the trees and he burned the trees. Even he dig their graves just to look for their jewelries because some people, they bury their, 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 their you know, the valuable things with their dead man. Muhammad, even he dig the graves of the Jews so he can look for jewels and gold and silver. So when this Muhammadan, he made this comment, I decide to give him a spank. Nice one. And I hope we did. All right. Any question? 
I'm actually, I wasn't planning to go. That's why I'm not actually in my computer, you know. I'm using uh, StreamYard, which is a program I don't really prefer much. But when you are not home, that's good to use it. You know, you are like... Uh, I heard that uh, Saudi Arabia will be like uh, Amazon forest. You know, uh, one one of the stupid things uh, a human being can think about is when you exaggerate in using using your life's uh, resource. In Saudi Arabia, not long time ago, during the life of the king, his name is Fahd. You know, the Saudi ro royal family. Uh, they call themselves royal, but in fact, they are just Bedouin. Thanks to the oil, they have palaces now. Uh, in order just to shut up the average citizen, especially in the time of Osama bin Laden, because Osama bin Laden became a threat to Saudi Arabia, for he is asking, he make videos asking people to revolt against the royal family. They are corrupt. They are kuffar. They are siding with America, blah, blah, blah. So in order to silence everybody who think about revolting, the easiest way is to buy the people because they knew the nature of the people. Just give them money, everybody will relax. So the Saudi king, he gave a mortgage and the mortgage is between 100 to 300,000 riyal. And the average of the riyal is like 375 of the dollar. So every dollar is a 375 of a riyal. And this mortgage, you don't pay it back. Like they give it to you. And then every few years, the king, he make, uh, he burden your mortgage. And that will make the citizen feel that they are owned, you know, by the king. And supposedly the plan they want to make Saudi Arabia green. And then everybody start establishing a farm. Actually, there's a certain year where Saudi Arabia was able to produce a lot of wheat. <laughs> but then they notice that they are out of water. They consumed what the ground had underneath. Through thousands of years, they consume it in less than 10 years. And now they don't have water in their ground. Their wells are dry and they do not know what to do. But thanks to the Western uh, technology, now they are making the salty water fresh water. Otherwise, Saudi Arabia will be dead. And now you have oil to cover the coast, but sooner or later, you will not be able to do that because the cost of making salty water fresh, it's even more expensive than even producing the gas. A liter of gas in Saudi Arabia costs less than a liter of water. So, uh, they don't know what to do. They are not really that smart people. Like now this crown prince, he is trying to build the cities of technology in Saudi Arabia. He thinks that will work. That will never work. Count my words. Because simply the nature of the people and the intelligence of the people will not fit for such a business. So what did he say to himself? He just announced last week that we will give tax in a exemption for companies. And not only that, now you can own in Saudi Arabia a company totally 100%, which means you do not need a partner in Saudi. You don't even pay tax as usual. They want to give you anything. Just come. Because he knew the future is coming and the future is bankrupt. But all of this is garbage. Because... If you do not know what Saudi Arabia is, then you do not know what Saudi Arabia is. This country, just living in it. If Let us say you build a house. Just, you build a villa, nice villa. The villa will have a cracks after a few years. The villa will start to be covered by sand. The, the highway, they need a lot of money to keep them a highway because the sand will cover them. One sand storm will cover all the highway. It's, the maintenance is very high. The cost is extremely high. There's a Swedish company. They got a license to uh, build the first, I think it was the first 
telecommunication company in Saudi Arabia. The Saudi government, they said to themselves, okay, well, we have a dumb people they do not know how to do this. Let them get this a Swedish. And they made an agreement that after 25 years, you know, the company will be owned by the government. So 25 years, you take all the income just to get your money and make, you know, good wealth. But after 25 years, you have to train our employees, our citizens, some of them. And after 25 years, the government will own the company. But 25 years came, 23 years came. And then the sand is covering the company from every side. And you cannot imagine how much it's going to cost. So cleaning the sand is going to cost more than building a new company. This is a country is not really blessed as many people think. It's doomed. No water. No life. Very bad weather. Extreme dry desert. Extreme heat to the point you need a lot of electricity even to have a normal day, to be able to function. So I know that all those projects are going to be a big failure. Pumping too much money they have now, they are just pumping it in the sewage, and you will see. The only successful company in Saudi Arabia they have is called Aramco. But Aramco is successful not because they are genius, but because the product is oil. Very simple. And the whole company run by foreigners. But this is the only product that's going to be successful. And when this product is not needed, then Saudi Arabia is going to go back to zero. Same as Qatar. And I believe strongly that oil is not going to be the future energy anymore. It might be surviving for some time, but I believe they are switching to nitrogen hydrogen sorry uh, very fast because hydrogen is way better and the technology and many countries including USA China Europe are spending a lot of money to find the best and the easiest and the fastest and the less cost way to produce hydrogen and the same as what happened one day when the Western came with the electricity the switch of the hydrogen will happen the same way. And then all the oil industry will collapse. Period. And countries who never had source of energy before, they will become wealthy. And countries who have all their wealth is from oil, they will become poor. Countries who have access to a lot of water, clean water, they will be rich because now their energy is for free. But who is the one is going to make that happen? Is the kuffar. The one you call them looters. It's not you. The American, the Chinese, the Korean, the Japanese. Even when you go to the space, you pay them to take you to the space, like what Imarat did. Emirates, they put their nose in everything. They want to, you know, they want to make themselves like, oh, we are advanced. We love. The American, they took the NASA. They took a guy from Emirates with them. And what is his title? Space specialist. Have you ever heard of such a title? Space specialist. What exactly is that? So in the spaceship, there's engineers. These doctors. I never heard of space specialist. So they spend a lot of money to go just to make a show. Imarat launched satellite, but the, the whole satellite is made in the chip is made in Israel, the the engine is uh, made in Ukraine. The I mean everything is made outside. Okay, we bring them. We bring Indian uh, engineers. They are the cheapest. We, they put it together and we launch it. And this is Emirati satellite now. <clears throat> so those rich people, you know, uh, 
they spend money, uh, first of all, uh, to give a glory for themselves, like the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. He's so proud of his, his you know, he want to be a special king. Uh, so, uh, you know, okay, we will have enough money for the coming hundred years. Well, in 100 years, I will be dead anyway. But I want those coming 200 years where I am ruling, or whatever, 50, or my son after me, will be a nice time for my family. After that, the country destroyed, who care? So they are dumping all their money. It's a waste of money, and this money will never come back. You know, the battery industry is going to change too. Uh, the battery industry is very important because, you know, uh, the energy needs to be stored somewhere, right? So that is improved too. Uh, but you will notice, like, you know, they speak about the looters, right? The Chinese are buying all the mine for batteries, material, around the world, starting from Africa. They are controlling Africa by they have the money uh, and now they are competing you know the American and etc who can control more source of this uh, material or resource however the industry of energy is going to shift heavily very very soon the oil industry which is the traditional we have it for 100 years and more is going to be still needed because there's a transition area. And the more oil get expensive, the faster the transition area or limit time will change. <clears throat> um. <coughs> All right, any other question? Do we have any Muslim making comment? So what we proved today, the important, uh, that Islam is a religion based in looting. People, did I give you enough proofs today? That Islam is based on looting? Did we provide you enough proof? As you see, Muslims are not even allowed to have tools for farming. And this is why I say, you know, if Muslims follow Muhammad, you see there is a there is a sheikh, his name is Al Qaradawi. He said, uh, jihad will enrich us. The reason most of Islamic countries are poor because we don't do jihad. If we attack the European, we take their women, we take their wealth, we will get rich. And he's right. But the stupid idiot, he forgot that he's no match to go in war. So what we do, okay, we will do different war now. We go in immigration. We increase the population of Muslims there. And by time, we are going to take over because those white European, each one of them, most of them don't get married. A Muslim guy, he will get five, ten kids. And the white man, the stupid European man, white or black, doesn't matter what today, but he will pay for my kid. You will see a Muslim immigrate to uh, to Australia. I saw a video of an imam. He have many, he have only one official wife because legally he can have only one. All the other women he sleep with, they are wives, but they are not registered. So what they do, including even the wife he is married to, you know, they register themselves as a, a single mother. By doing that, they get support for the babies from the government. So he don't work. More than 30 years he lived in Australia, he never have a day job. The stupid Australian, they pay for those women. And not only that, I mean, he marry a woman for women uh, in the mosque. And then after that, he married a new woman. He divorced this one. So all of them, they are collecting support, child support, even when he is not married to them no more. 
because they are single mothers. So they take advantage of the stupid looters, the one most of them call them looters, you know, like this guy called them looters. And now you are the one is looting them. <laughs> you are a looter who did loot Iraq, Syria, Egypt, you know, Constantinia, uh, Greece, most of Europe, you took it. And we know what happened. Spain, you know, hundreds of years occupied Spain. So taking the wealth of others is okay. But the other is taking our wealth, which is not ours. We store it already. Is bad. And this is how we expose the garbage of those people who clean. You know? Things. American men are feminist? Yeah, well, I should send you to Texas, and then they will show you how feminist they are. Stupid idiot. Block this guy. American men are feminist. Do you dare to go and say that in America? You will get shot in two seconds, potato. <laughs> feminist. Is that why when the American enter Saddam Hussein army, Saddam Hussein army collapsed in less than 24 hours? Because the American men are feminist? Is that the reason? Huh? Is that why you are asking them to protect you in Saudi Arabia from Iran? Is that why you are defeated by the Shia in Saudi Arabia now? And you've been forced to shake hands with the Shia and now you are giving Yemen to the Shia? Feminist. You know, when... Uh, when the Israeli army, who have maybe 10% of it is women, maybe more, they go inside Gaza, all the Mujahideen who they are not feminist, they have a beard, long beard, they hide, they disappear. After the Israeli soldiers leave, suddenly all the Mujahideen, they are outside in the screaming, Allahu Akbar, where is the Jews? Where is the Jews? You know, once in Lebanon, the Israeli, two Israeli helicopter, not 20, not 30, not 40, just two helicopter. They landed in the highway in Beirut. They arrested a sheikh from Hezbollah with his bodyguards. Imagine the bodyguards, right away they, they, draw, they, they, they dropped their weapon, their clashing cough. They did not even shoot. They took them all in the helicopter. They took them to Israel. And after 15 minutes from flying, suddenly Hezbollah in the street, like, where you been when the helicopter, you know, you will not believe it. They come down in the ground and they have dogs with them. The Jews, they have dogs. And they were like walking in the street as if nothing happened in the middle of Beirut. They come down from the helicopters. They surrounded those two cars. They have... You know, a German shepherd with them. They took the sheikhs, they put them in the helicopter, they took the bodyguards, and they fly. Not a single shot was shot at them. After they left, suddenly all the fighters of Hezbollah in the street shooting in the sky. Reality check, my friend. Who is the one who trained your army in Qatar, the American? Why Qatar have the biggest base of the American? Because you cannot protect yourself. You are a hyena. You hide behind the big beast. That's the truth. Emirat is the same. Saudi Arabia is the same. All of you are the same. And now the Saudi are trying to find another beast to protect them. China. They said to themselves, "All oh, those Americans, they are giving us a hard time. Maybe we can find that you know bigger protection, like other protector, the Chinese." Whoever big, the hyena walk in his tail. And that's how Islamic countries work. Prove me wrong. Anyway, I'm not going to keep you longer. Just, uh, did we save the reference? 
Did we save the reference? I hope so. Yeah, the biggest base of America, army base in the world is in Qatar, paid by Qatari government. Everything paid, electricity for free, uh, their petroleum is for free, everything for free. This potato who made himself a prince, he's not a prince, the guy he put his, uh, his father, he got his grandfather in jail so he can take the, over the country. Actually, his brother should be the prince. Supposedly, they 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 they, they give him like a, a fancy like title, but he cannot control. But anyway, they speak too much about how brave they are, but in reality, in war, they are potatoes. But even when the the, the Azerbaijan they attack Armenia, every war the Armenian they beat them with no question. Until the Israeli step and they help, and the Turkish step and they help Azerbaijan to fight. Three countries versus a small, tiny Armenia. It's not even 10 million population. While Azerbaijan count tens of millions of population. There's more than 20 million Azerbaijani in Iran alone. Why Israel will help a Muslim nation? Because the Israeli government are evil. Is that new? They don't care for the Christians. Many think that Israel stands with the Christians. That's false. If a war happen in the future, I assure you, let us say a war happen between USA and Islamic countries. I will not be surprised if Israel took the side of the Muslims. You see, I defend the right of Israel to, to, to be exist, but I don't defend the Israeli government. They always do evil. Like the last evil they did not long time ago is supporting the terrorists in Syria. The terrorists in Syria, they are killing Christians. Israel supported them. America supported them. So we have, we have evil governments in America. We have evil government in Israel. Zero ethic. You know? Who is the one who supported Taliban and Osama bin Laden in Afghanistan? American. The truth. Even Osama bin Laden, he was published in New York Post as a hero. Hero. Mujahid. Go search it right now on Google. Who is the one who gave Taliban and Al-Qaeda missiles and trained them how to do side bombing or suicide bombing? CIA. Go watch the videos of and articles of senators, American senators. Go and tell the CIA was reading Quran for the Mujahideen, Allahu Akbar. John McCain, he went to Syria supporting the terrorists in Syria. When John McCain came to USA, they asked him, but don't those people, they were shouting Allahu Akbar. John McCain suddenly, he is uh, explaining Islam. He said, Allahu Akbar means God is great. What's wrong with that? And later we found that between those who were shouting next to McCain as the one who became the head of ISIS later. And speaking of looters, I mean, the looters of ISIS, their, their blood is still there. Hundreds and thousands of women being kidnapped, slaved, raped. And the Muslim they talk about looters see we don't take a side of a government we don't take a side of a country or a, go a government of a country we as a Christian we should say the truth as it is when you are evil we say you are evil as simple as that how Israel is fighting Hamas in Gaza, and they are supporting Hamas, which is the Muslim Brotherhood in Syria. You tell me. But I believe that always when you support evil, evil will come back to you. Evil will 
evil will come back to you. You know, when Yasser Arafat was a major force for the Palestinian Muslims, Hamas, they have a leader, he's an old man, and he's nobody. Israel is the one who released him from jail so Hamas can grow. They made him a hero. And the purpose was to divide the Palestinian. Well, good for you, you divided them. But now you have Hamas. They grow evil, thinking that this evil will, will fight forever with that evil. And we will be watching, but you are mistaken. Yes, they are fighting until now. They will never be okay with together. The first target is accomplished. But now you have Hamas. <laughs> you know what I mean? Evil is evil. And the one who supports evil is evil. No matter what you do. Evil always will come back to you. Don't ever think that if you grow weeds in your backyard to suffocate an enemy, the weed will not spread all over your backyard. All right? Uh, well, all those, uh, you know, the one we see in the government today, senators, most of them, they are, you know, corrupt, false, liars, they, they say what people like to hear, you know, but reality is different. Reality is different, you know. Obama, he came to the, to the office speaking about himself as he is a, a moderate, uh, he is a liberal, uh, he is a, a reformer. Even the stupid liberals, they start calling him the messiah of the 20th century. Uh, but Obama, when he was in office, the depot of missiles of USA was empty. He killed hundreds of thousands in Afghanistan. And the reason for that, because Obama is a Shia and the Afghani Mujahideen are Sunni, he was defending his masters in Iran. And he is the one who gave all the money to Iran. So in this country, everybody is for, you know, belong to somebody. When Trump, he came to the office, I voted for Trump. And maybe if he go again, I will vote for him. But not because he is the best or he is good. No, I believe he's stupid. And I believe he's corrupt too. But we don't have something, what we can do. We don't have options. They bring you two. Either Democrat, idiot, or Trump. So what do you do? Trump, he was in the pocket of the Arab all the time he's in the office. All what he cared for, give me money. Zero ethic. He had no shame even to take a picture of a chick given by the Saudi prince. I mean, this is the greatest country, supposedly. You are saying make America great again. Don't you look so small by holding a chick in your hand? And you are a president of America? What that chick mean? I mean, the GDP of Saudi Arabia in the whole year is not even for, for one day income in USA. They worship money. Qatar supporting terrorism. Trump, he go in the front of the White House speaking against Qatar, says Qatar have to stop supporting terrorism. Few months after, Qatar rented from his son-in-law his building in New York for $1 billion dollar. Since then, Qatar is his best friend. And actually, I believe the reason we don't hear from his daughter Ivanka and his son-in-law anymore because they have a lot of evidence against them, so they made a deal. Never step in the politics again, otherwise we will take you to court. I mean, isn't, isn't, it, isn't it obvious? A foreign government rent a building from someone, he is the son of law of Trump, and he is a consultant. Not only is he is already official in the government. 
and his daughter is a consultant for the White House too. Isn't it obvious? $1 billion for 99 years rent. Have you ever heard of such a contract? Who wanna rent my house for a million dollar 99 years? <laughs> you know, so all of them, they are a scam back. But the American are poor people. They have no choices. They have a person who will destroy the economy, who will make inflation, who will make the gas prices go crazy. He will make, uh, he, he is busy with the transgender and bathroom. That's how stupid they are. And the other person who maybe he's corrupt, or I can say mostly he is, uh, but he is good in the economy. He can make the price of gas go down. He can make America have a better life as it, when he was. So which one is better? And he will not be busy with the transgender stupidity thing. Well, this is the truth. And now we have an idiot. His name is Biden. He is busy with the transgender. Who is a woman? This is what they are busy. I mean, this this is how stupid those uh, you know liberals they are. I believe that liberalism is a curse to any country in the world. Any country when I have uh, like future, bring liberal to it. You will get the opposite. If you look at everything they do, like oh, China now is owning the world. And China is putting gas and etc. in the in the air, the carbon. The liberals are busy how we can control the carbon. My friend, it doesn't work this way. Because if all the world is not listening, us alone cannot do anything. Everything is me we have here, everything I have in my room is made in China. So you stupid between rules. I mean, if you want to open a company, they put a million rules on you to be sure you are not producing carbon, which is good, but they are increasing the cost and they are changing nothing. They stop all production, but they are buying all from, from other countries. So what the point? What the point of stopping producing oil here and the oil in USA is way more cleaner than the oil in other countries? Way more cleaner. Do you see how stupid they are? We have a lot of oil, enough for like hundreds of years. They prefer to buy it and give the money to the ones who hate them instead of getting their own oil. So I, you know, for me, my opinion about liberals uh, is nothing but, you know, they are stupid people. This is how I see them. Awkward, weird though. You know, mental. <clears throat> we have some Muslims here. They are saying what we are saying is a lie. Well, yeah, you can tell. You are right. The prophet who said you can take an oath falsely. Anyway, I think we have enough for today. Guys, did we save the reference? Let me let me make a summary of what we said today about Muslims following Muhammad, tra training them how to be looters. Muhammad, he claimed, and he assured that Allah religion sponsored by the wicked men. The hadith is Sahih al-Bukhari 4203. Muhammad, he says, get up and make announcement that none but a believer will enter paradise and that Allah may support the religion with the evil wicked men. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 4203. Other hadith. Let us see. This hadith here is teaching the Muslims to take care of the Christians because they are the source of their income. Not because they want to be nice to them, 
take care for them for now and we will kill them later because now they are the source of your income. And he did not say any more to us. And then these words, Muhammad bin Jafar said, uh, to Sahab, the Sahaba said, uh, okay, sorry, I have to go back. Yeah, he says, uh, take, uh, I advise you, Muhammad is speaking, I advise you to be kind to non-Muslim people and that the rules of al dimma which means you pay jizya or you die like a slave. For they have a covenant with your prophet and they give you the source of your income. So why the Muslims for now? So later we will continue. So leave them for now. Do you see it? Leave them for now. So Muslims for centuries and centuries, they were looting the Arab Christians and the Jews. And they make them, they, they let them stay alive, not because Islam is teaching them to be good. You see, it says here, be kind. In which way? Don't kill them yet. This is the kindness, the maximum kindness they can be. For they are the source of your income. You have to milk them. Leave them for now. For now. We continue. And this is Sahih Hadith. Exist in Al-Bukhari 3162. And Musnad Ahmad 362-363. As you see in the screen. We go to different Hadith. Muslims, because they are living as looters for century and century, and Muhammad, he want them to be doing nothing but looting. We see this story in front of us, narrated by Umama al-Bahili. I saw some agriculture equipment and said, I heard the Prophet saying, there is no house in which this equipment enters except that Allah will cause humiliation to enter it. Sahih al-Bukhari, hayat number 2321. What we learn from this? That Muslims are not even allowed to do farming. You will be cursed if you have farming tools in your house. So how Muslims feed themselves? They go to supermarket at that time? They buy food from Thailand maybe? From India? They buy rice from Vietnam, wheat from Ukraine. This is the culture and the religion of thieves. This is the truth about Islam. And Muhammad in chapter 9, verse number 29, and verse number 28, when Muhammad, he forbid the Christian and Jews from entering the city of Mecca and Medina, he says, if you fear poverty, Allah will reach you by his, from his bounty. The verse after it says, attack the Christian and the Jews, kill them, take their money, or they pay jizya. And that become the source of their income. To the point even, when sometimes Christians who they are poor, they can't afford to live no more, they send letters to the caliphate asking permission to join Islam. The caliphates, they refuse. Because if they all join Islam, who is going to pay the source of our income? Do you understand? If they decide to join Islam, then we cannot force them to pay jizya. The caliphate refuse some villages who ask permission to enter into Islam, to leave a Christianity just for the sake of making a living. They want to live. Every few days, every week, two weeks, they come and they take their chicken, they take their goats, they take their milk, they take their cheese, they take their wheat. And you stand watching, you cannot do anything. And as you see, this is their books. They are the source of your income. If there is other source? No. So if you are going to make a video, maybe you can cut the last part of this video because we summarize. So you can make it short and maybe you can give it a title. What is the source of source of income for Muslims or where it's coming from? Use your, you know, uh, let us say skills to give it a title with a nice uh, thumb 
so you can get people to join and watch it. I want to say thank you guys for being here. I hope we did what is enough. And if we go again, uh, if, I, if I'm able to go again, why people, they are uh, crying that their race is dying down because low birth rates. Yeah. Uh, my friend, but uh, your, your high birth rate is not even good for you. You are crying too. Go and see what high birth happening doing in Egypt. You are sleeping in the street. Your nation are hungry. Go and see what happened in Bangladesh. I mean, uh, sometimes Muslims, they come with the stupid things. At least those people who are saying their race is dying, uh, they will not die uh, homeless and hungry. You go and see. If I show you right now how people live in Bangladesh, what you will say? You are not dying by birth there. Hmm? You like to go into Bangladesh? High birth rate is a problem, not a gift. Because you have no education, no resource, no money, no income. And then you make babies. And then those babies will end doing drugs. Or doing drugs <laughs> let me let me show you this is a train this is a train in Bangladesh see you don't have a problem with birth there so the the birth is a problem This is how the Muslims, they celebrate their Eid. Their Eid in Bangladesh. Do you see the Eid, brother? Do you see? You have a high birth. You are dead. Pakistan right now are begging for, for donation, for money, from the Christians, from everybody. So what you say is very stupid. We laugh at you. You wish, actually, that you don't have a high birth. Your high birth is destroying your nations. You're just a stupid idiot. Uh, you know, sometimes I find Muslim comments is offensive to Muslims because they bring humility to their own people. Countries, Muslim countries who have low birth population are the one who living good like Qatar Emirat the whole country as a normal they are not even 1 million the citizen if they are 20 million the country will become poor Israel I know they are not even 6 million but can we measure how people live between Israel and any Islamic neighboring country including Jordan or even Syria or Iraq or can we? So quality is more important than birth rate. However, countries who don't produce enough babies to continue, that will be dangerous. Extreme low birth is a stupid. High birth number is a stupid. Human beings have to be smart. You don't make babies and throw them in the street like what happened in Islamic countries. Garbage. Look at this. Disgusting. Thank God I'm not born in that country. And I say it loud and clear. Right? Uh, so your birth, your high birth is, is a curse on you. It's not a blessing, my friend. Enjoy your curse. Uh, you know, we have a Christian country, uh, Philippines. I mean, nobody, I think, have babies like in the Philippines. But is that the right thing to do? Babies on the street everywhere? 
very wrong. Everybody have like seven, eight, ten, nine, but they are poor. So high birth is not the right way to do. See, God, we are against abortion, but still you can control how many baby you can have. And you should not have more than what you can take care of. Otherwise, your children will end homeless, prostitution, drugs. They will go in the wrong because they, they have to make a living. They have to eat. Somebody have to feed them. Uh, LGBTQ in Uganda? No, I did not hear. Well, you know, many countries, they will follow the Western stupidity in that field, and they will try to copy them. But I believe all of those things will fail. You know, those things is like a trend, you know, a trend. Like they, uh, you put them in the screen, you show, so everybody talk about it. But then it's going to die, you know. I mean, uh, you know, uh, gays and lesbian and those things and transgender, they exist for thousands of years. They never change anything. You put them in TV, you make show for them, you try to promote them. Still, still, there's majority of people nowhere anywhere in the world, they will not like the behavior of a man trying to, like wearing a skirt. If you ask me if a man, he wanna shake hands with me and he was wearing a skirt, I'm not going to shake hands with him. <laughs> you know I'm free it's a free country so the majority of America will be the same so the world the world my friend it's it's you know when you go against the nature the nature will reject you don't those people they speak about nature a lot aren't they hippie aren't they the one who watched the sad guru videos you know hippies suddenly they don't listen for the nature the nature made you with private part of a man, white shoulder, a voice of Tarzan, and then you want to convince me by putting some makeup on your face that you are a female. <laughs> you know? Uh, good luck. I'm not convinced. You know? The only one is convinced is you. <laughs> so it doesn't matter how much, how much they try to enforce it in any culture, I assure you, they will never succeed because the nature of a human being will reject such a thing. Yeah. Anyway, I want to say thank you guys for being here. Feel free to download my videos and we pray for the world to see the truth and the truth will set them free. Take care and God bless you. Bye-bye.